France on him. And Ovin St. Pru. Well, for a long time, he's been mentioned with the baddest men on the planet. For a long time, though, the title fight eluded him. Not anymore. Here he is, the number one heavyweight contender, finally making this walk and cracking a smile. He's waited a long time for this. He's not expecting a 25-minute war. He believes he has the power and the skills to get this thing done quickly. I guess we'll find out. All right, so here he is making his way to the Octagon Heavyweight title defense. This has been the baddest man on the planet now for several years, and he has taken on all comers more often than not, leaving them twitching on the canvas. Knockout power for days. The question is tonight, with a challenge like this, can he walk out the way he came in as the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Champion of the world? Our tale of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Nganu is 33. St. Prue is 37. Nganu weighed in at 250 pounds. He will have a three-inch reach advantage. For the introductions, here is Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. This is the moment UFC fans around the world have been waiting for. Live from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas. It's time! Five rounds for the undisputed UFC Heavyweight Championship of the World. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a kickboxer, holding a professional record of 25 wins, 15 losses. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 205 pounds. Fighting out of Knoxville, Tennessee, USA, presenting the challenger, Ovitz St. Poo. And now introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 16 wins, three losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Francis. The Predator and God. You have seatbelt on the line, guys. Protect yourself at all time. Obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now. Go back to your corner. They touch him up, and we are underway. So here we go as round one gets underway. Two world-class level strikers here, and the expectation is we're going to get a kickboxing match here in the octagon. Yes, we are going to get a striking match. One guy is very good at kicks. The other guy has unbelievable hands. Let's see what type of attack is going to win the battle of two great stand-up fighters. 
big powerful punch lands. Now he gets back to range. Look at him drive his shin into the opponent's body with that body kick. Straight right, he misses. Hardy closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Huge knee lands for Clint. And Ganu gets touched by that kick there. All right, so there it is, the early takedown. He told everyone here during fight week within earshot that he was gonna try to wrestle, try to get this fight to the ground, and had no problem doing so just then. During their fight camp, they made a checklist, and they checked off the most important part of the fight, getting an early takedown. Oh, he's got the ground and pound going now. Well, hard to win fights in mixed martial arts from the bottom, but nice work here in that position by Francis Ngannou. I love watching this guy move on the ground. Another nice transition there. Such a high-level grappler. You don't see that very often. Oh, so an interesting decision there as he decides to stand up and relinquish the dominant position. Oh, a little single collar tie there. Right hand punch for the clinch. That's a really strong leg kick there by St. Cruz. Here he is back in the clinch. And he connects there. Pretty nice punch there. Great job finding the range to land those oh. punches. Who's hurt? Throws him up. Go get him. Oh! So just over 20 total strikes have landed for Oban St. Paul. Swing and a miss with that straight left hand. All right, he engages in a single that is how he folks. Big punch lands over the top. How's he gonna follow this one up? All right, so Francis and Gano pretty patient here early on and moving on his chair. When you look at a guy like Francis, who has such tremendous power, fight behind a jab, it shows you how much he's evolving. He's not just searching for a knockout blow, he's trying to set it up. Left hand punch for the clinch. Stuffs the takedown there. How good is his takedown defense? Collar tie. He's back in the push position. This is where he has done a ton of good work here. Punch, punch, punch to the head from the clinch. Ngannou's kick to the body, that one blocked. Looks like his leg is hurt here. You can even see him limping a little bit. So he's really starting to put together some significant body shots here. These are gonna take their toll as this fight goes on. All right, single collar tie now. Oh, big knee to the body. That'll soften him up. Oh! Got the single collar tie. Right hand punch from the clinch. Oh, how about the right hand from Francis Ngannou? It's hard to watch. I can't imagine it feels awfully good. You watch Francis put out an entire generation of heavyweight that came before him. Put out Overeem. Put out Velasquez. Put out Dos Santos. And he did it all with that beautiful right hand. It is one of the death. That's a perfect scramble right there. Beautiful transition. Final seconds here. Look at him chopping the wood. Chop the wood with those legs. And both guys really throwing with authority. All right, DC, let's look at some of the highlights from the last round. Lot for the replay guys to choose from. Yeah, man, these guys stood on a quarter in the middle of the octagon. Take one to give one. Over and over, each guy landed, and they both landed very well over the course of that first round. 
All right, we have arrived at the start of round two. Francis Ngannou and Ovin St. Fruit. He's throwing every part of himself into these big leg kicks. Huge block there. He'll engage in a single collar tie. Oh, that's a good strike there by St. Prue. All right, so no surprise. Once again, we find ourselves here in this clinch situation. We'll see who can advance. Who's going to be the person to dictate the pressure? Who's going to control the engagement from this 50-50 position? Single collar tie now. Right hand punch from the clinch. All right, well, he's landed some good shots tonight, but there's no three-piece, there's no soda. More often than not, it's one and done. He's not even getting a combination. I mean, hey. if you're going to sit there at the drive-thru, <laughs> order a combination, take the soda. Oh, late defense on the takedown and scrambles to his feet. Nicely done. Oh, that's a big hook to the chin. All right, he engages in the single collar tie. Effective strike there by St. Crew. Ngannou's uppercut, but that one is blocked. I mean, he's cutting them down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Let's get some offense. Let's get going. St. Crew's got the tie clinch. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh, continuing to work the body to great effect. Visibly limping here. Oh, eats a knee to the head. Whoa! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. So some fight stats for you here. 57 total strikes have landed for Francis Ngannou. And landing with 42% accuracy thus far against Ovin St. Preux. Out of range with that one. Go for the takedown. Oh, single collar tie here. Oh, he did a great job of rotating him into an underhook. So a much different approach from him here in round two. It took him a while to find the... That one appeared to stun him. He needs to start looking to finish now because he's got his opponent hurt very bad. Now goes in and secures the takedown. Well, he's more than content to work off of his back, DC, where he has been a magician in his UFC career. Working off of his back here, looks like he may try to hip escape. St. Cruz looking to pass out of the half guard and attain side control here, but unable to do so. Strong bottom work here, staying busy. Under two minutes now to go. All right, operating inside the closed guard now. Oh, nicely done there as he escapes back to his feet. Look at the whip action that comes from him throwing that kick. Keep your hands up, protect your face. All right, he closes the distance, gets the single collar tie. Just out of range with that right hook. And misses with the right hand. Nice loop and punch. Under a minute now to go. Oh! He's in trouble. He's hurt bad. Oh, he might be out. Nice hook lands. Thirty seconds to go in the round. Oh, a little single collar tie there. Oh, now going to the judo throw. He ends up in side control. A lot of options for him here. Yeah, he can either go ground and pound or he can chase submission. 
All right, he's got him in the north-south position here, DC. When you're in this position, however rare it may be. Inside control, you got a ton of options. He goes knees on belly. He's postured up. He's landed big ground and pound. He has to move on the bottom or the fight's going to get stopped. Round three next. All right, let's now look back at some of the action from that round. He went head hunting, landed, nearly got the finish, too. A lot of coaches tell you don't head hunt. In this case, he's been headhunting, and he landed a big enough shot to truly put his opponent on notice. Championship fight. Blocks the shot. All right, he engages in a single collar tie here. Ooh, what a punch. Back to the jab now, no good. attempt just misses. Almost in range with the straight left, but that's a miss. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Takedown defense holds up. All right, so the unofficial numbers tell you 77 total strikes have landed for Ovin St. Preux and landing with 43% accuracy against Francis Ngannou. Nice punch by the predator, Francis Ngannou. Oh, collar tie. Uppercut lands for him. Big right hook coming, it's blocked. Nice right hand. Oh, the master of the transition, nice scramble. Just missed with the left there. All right, single collar tie now. Oh! What a fantastic strike to throw at the exact right moment. He deserves this moment. Go finish his fight. Uppercut there blocked by Ngana. Nice. Stuffs that takedown attempt without issue. And he caught the kick. We'll see what he can do with it. Nice job staying busy here in the clinch. Got the single collar tie. I mean, this guy is really focused on those punches to the head inside of the clinch. Some of the best kicks in the game that you'll see right there. All right, he'll engage in a single collar tie. Again, back into this position. St. Cloud gets the takedown. Just over two minutes to go in the round. Go, guys, work. All right, so inside the open guard of his opponent, you gotta be careful playing around for too long here on the ground with this guy. Fighter trying to pass here, ooh, but gets denied. Gets denied, great job, great recognition of seeing what your opponent was trying to do. Oh, really nice work to keep busy off of his back as he lands some more offense here for Bob. Oh, nice job to reverse position on the ground. It was bad, but now it's not so bad. What a fantastic sweep. All right, good movement by him here on the ground. He really is a master of these transitions. He is a master of movement on the ground. You never know where he's gonna be. Beautiful movement, hip work on the ground here, just outstanding with the transition. He is not staying in one place on the ground, and that's very important. 
Well, any time you are in a ground-fighting situation with this fighter, you're potentially playing with fire. And Connor's looking to pass out of the half guard here, maybe looking for side control. He's denied. Oh, wow, that happened quickly as the fighter reverses position there on the ground. Unbelievable position change. Wow, what a transition. Oh, he's got that right hand going tonight, DC. Connected with it there. He's thrown so many left jabs to throw that right punch straight down the pipe. It's unreal. St. Cruz right back to the full mount here. Twenty seconds now remain in the round. Make sure he stays high. Ten seconds to go. All right, bottom fighter here, maybe looking to hip escape DC. That's three rounds. We're now headed to the championship hey, round. All right, now we take a look back at some of the action in that previous round, DC. A lot to like on both sides, really. I mean, both were intent on going forward. And what happens when nobody wants to take a step back? They meet in the middle. That's exactly what they did, and they both found success over the course of that round. All right, so here we go. You can feel the tension. Fourth round is underway. We'll see who has the upper hand here. You feel it inside of the... Oh! oh! He was hurt. Serve him up. Go get him. And now he engages in a Muay Thai clinch, and I think a lot of people watching wonder how you can control an opponent like that. Hard to get out of. It's very difficult to get out of. Look and notice how tight his elbows are as he's maneuvering and moving his opponent into positions where he can get off his strikes. Oh, lands a stiff punch there. Nice connection. Oh, nice land. St. Cruz head kick is blocked, so no damage inflicted there. Connects with a right. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. Single collar tie now. Oh, huge left hand from Francis Ngannou. Every time he loads up and extends, oh! Oh, he's hurt bad. He's hurt bad, John. He's got to press him. He's got to go chase that finish down now. Oh! He's very comfortable fighting off his back, DC. Now looks like he's trying to hip escape. Yeah, he's trying to hip escape or maybe look for a Kimura here. St. Cruz's lower jaw does not look good. I don't think it's broken, but starting to show some obvious signs of slump. Lands with the ground and pound here. He's putting him in exactly the positions he needs to be in right now. He's able to relax here. And he understands, being a veteran of so many fights, that as long as he's on top, he's winning. He feels like he's winning here. Man, this is some serious ground and pound. He's trying to put this dude's head, like, through the canvas. He's one of the better ground and pound fighters we have in the entire UFC, and you're seeing why. Side control now, DC. A lot of options at his disposal from here. Well, there are a few things more fun to watch in mixed martial arts than these type of transitions and scrambles on the ground. High-level grappling can really be entertaining. Let's go. We got a scramble here. All right, DC, half guard position here. You've done a lot of good work in this spot in your career. Oh, man, I love this position. And you see this fighter today on, loves it, too. Down. It is the most secure position in fighting. You get an underhook on one side, you keep a half guard on the other, and then you just go to work. It's the safest position especially for a wrestler. Oh, the ground and pound 
strikes continue to rain down the opponent. Better move out of harm's way or the referee's gonna stop this. Thing. He better start to move, and when his opponent starts to posture, he needs to put his feet on the hip, push him away to try to escape this very, very dangerous position. Final minute to go here in round four. Win the scramble! Win the scramble! 45 seconds remain in the round. seconds to go here. All right, he's got him in the north-south position now, DC. We'll see if the crowd can be mature about this. Yes, they have to be mature <laughs> about the fact that this is a real fighting position, and the guy on top has a lot of opportunities to finish. If he's going to attack this north-south choke, he's got to drive that shoulder deep into his neck, really start to sink his weight away, which will in turn cut the oxygen from his opponent, allowing him to get the finish. Buzzer sounds for the end of round four. All right, let's check out some of the action DC and how about the punching acumen by that fighter in that previous round? He does not waste anything. He does not loop punches. Everything's tight. Everything's precise. He's a sniper. We always talk about how he's a sniper. He is a sniper. And it showed in that exchange that allowed him to drop his opponent. You ready? You ready? Fifth and final round. Big body kick. Oh, single collar tie here. All right, so volume uppercuts here on the clinch. That one looked like it really hurt. Better make some adjustments here. Got to make some adjustments. You cannot take those shots to the head like that. Over and over, he's landing these big body kicks. Oh, there's the swing and there's the miss by the Predator, Francis Ngannou. That shot blocked. Whoa! Ngannou's has got full mount now. All right, looks like he's got a couple hooks in here, DC, and defensively, you better be careful. He wiped the ball. Enjoy watching this one back. Let's take a look at the replay of the knockout just a moment ago. It was right hand after right hand after right hand. Finally, he found the one that hit the exact sweet spot that ended his opponent's night. Now we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Eve Leving has called a stop to this contest at 58 seconds of round number five. Declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC heavyweight champion of the world, Francis the Predator and Gano. All right, so we hear and still tonight, our UFC heavyweight champion came in with a lot of pressure, a lot of height, and he successfully defends the title here tonight. With all that pressure, he never changes his approach. He always does exactly what he says he's going to do, and he remains the champion in the UFC's biggest and most dangerous division.